Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back. That's a bit loud, isn't it? I think we may be clipping. Let's go ahead and see if we can fix that in post. Ooh. Ah, that's a lot better. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try that again. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am back with a review of a brand new microphone from Rode, the NT1 5th Gen. This microphone has both XLR and USB outputs, and the main selling point is the USB output has 32-bit floating point recording, which is how we were able to conduct that magic which fixed the clipping in post. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost around $250. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. Also, in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Rode sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of making this review. For the majority of this video, I am running the microphone over USB directly into my Mac, recording 32-bit floating point 48 kilohertz. My gain is set at 37 dB. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost or cut the level in post, so make sure to check the lower third to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You are going to get a dust cover. You will obviously get the microphone. You will get a shock mount which has both 5 8 and 3 8 inch threading built in. You'll get a pop filter, a USB-C to USB-C cable, an XLR to XLR cable, and a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels great, just like the prior iterations of the NT1 and NT1A. It has an all metal body and a metal mesh grill with zero give to it. On the bottom, you will find the standard XLR port. And then if you take a little bit closer of a look, just tucked away in there all nice and cozy is the USB-C port. And finally, if it matters to you, this microphone is made in Australia. Also, for comparison's sake, here is a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the NT1 5th gen against the NT1 4th gen and the NT1A. The body shape and the grille look to be identical to the NT1A, in case you care about that. Then as far as the specs of this microphone, it offers a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 32 dB, a self noise of only 4 dBA, a max SPL of 142 dB, an impedance of 100 ohms, phantom power requirement of 48 volts, conversion of 24 bit or 32 bit floating point and 4896 or 192 kilohertz hertz sample rate. Now I am spinning around the NT1 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and the mouth noises, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about six inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the NT1 about two feet away from the NT1, and about four feet away from the Rode NT1 fifth generation. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, here are the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now, here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room about six inches away from my mouth. And now, here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Next, in order to see how effective the provided shock mount is, I'll tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm.
And now because I'm a terribly annoying person, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to do a very quick A-B comparison between the USB and the XLR output. Currently you are listening to the USB recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. All of the processing has been turned off and here is how it sounds. And now here is how the microphone sounds running over XLR into the Focusrite 18i 22nd gen 24-bit 48 kilohertz. So same bit depth, same sample rate. Gain set at 130, and here is how this sounds compared to the USB. And again, here is how the microphone sounds running over USB. Do you hear a difference, or do they sound identical? And again, here is a sample of me speaking into the NT1 running over XLR. Six inches away still, gain still set at 130. Do you hear the difference, or do the sounds sound identical? Do the outputs sound identical? Let me know in the comments down below. And now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can hear the NT1 outside of a vacuum, hear how it sounds in the context of the market, and hear how it stacks up against the competition. Starting on the NT1, 6 inches away, running into the 18i20, gain set at 130, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here's how it sounds. All right, first up on the chopping block is the AT2020. This goes for $100. Six inches away, gain set at 130. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted in post. And there you go, first microphone comparison. Back again on the NT1 for another palate cleanser. Nothing has changed. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone. Now we are on the neat King B version 2, which goes for about $170. I am still 6 inches away. My gain is still set at around 130. Check the lower third again, and there you go. Second microphone comparison. Let's do a bunch more. All right, we have another microphone for your listening pleasure, but first off, here is your palate cleanser. Let's go to the third microphone. Now we are on the Rode NT1A, which goes for about $200. The NT1 5th Gen uses the same body shape as the NT1A, but here is how this sounds compared to the NT1 5th Gen. Which do you prefer? What kind of differences do you hear? Let me know. Let's do a bunch more. Okay, we have another palate cleanser for you. This is the NT1, 6 inches away, gain at 130. Let's go to another one. Next, we are on the Lewitt LCT440 Pure, which goes for about $270. So this is $20 more than the NT1 5th Gen. Six inches away, gain set at 130 still. Make sure to check the lower third, and let's do more. That means it's time for another palate cleanser, and I am still six inches away from the NT1, losing my mind. Here's how it sounds. Let's go to another one. Now we are on the comparison that I am most excited for. This is the NT1 4th Gen, which is still for sale, and this goes for $270. That means it's $20 more expensive than the newer model. So either the newer model uses cheaper components, or the older version is overpriced. I don't know. But do they sound the same? Do they sound different? Let me know in the comments down below, and let's go ahead and move on. You know I wouldn't leave you hanging. It was unresolved. Back on the NT... <laughs> Back on the NT1, here is how it sounds. Let's go to another microphone. I don't know how many we have done. I stopped counting. Now I am on another Rode microphone, the NT2A, which goes for about $400. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters. And here is how this sounds. Six inches off, gain set at 130 still. And there you go. Let's do some more comparisons still. What? Hey, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back again on the NT1, six inches away. This is another palate cleanser. Let's go to the next mic. Now I am on the Shure KSM32, which goes for between $600 and $650. Six inches off, gain still set at 130, and here is how this compares to the NT1 5th Gen. Let's go back and do two more comparisons, I think. 
I think we are up to the penultimate microphone, so here is your penultimate palate cleanser. NT1, six inches away, gain at 130. Let's go to that second to last microphone. Next, we are on one of the most popular voiceover microphones, the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. TLM 103. This goes for about $1,200. Six inches off. Gain still set at 130. Let me know what you think, and let's do one more comparison. And do you all know what the final microphone is going to be, but here is your palate cleanser. Rode NT1, six inches away, gain set at 130 on the Focusrite 18i 22nd gen. Let's go to the final microphone. And to wrap out the comparison, we are now on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann! U87AI, cardioid mode, no pad, no filter. This goes for about $3,700. Six inches off, dropped my gain to about 12 o'clock or midnight or noon, whatever you want to say. And here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that is a fraction of the cost. $3,700 versus $250. Worth it? Not worth it? I don't know. Let's go to the music test. <laughs> I don't recall this melody, but it seems familiar to me. Won't you please just tell me what it is? I kind of ruined it there, didn't I? <laughs> oh well. But seriously, it is right on the tip of my brain tongue, and I just can't get my finger or my tongue on it. What is the melody? <sighs> It's driving me insane. It's gonna be Aqua or Ace of Bass or some 90s techno. Tell me what it is and let's go to the conclusion. I literally never know how to start these outros, so I'll just say this microphone takes one of my favorite microphones, the NT1, and it adds a really cool new feature to it. But first up, let's talk about the pros. The first one is that super low self noise of 4 dBA. That is just awesome. You also get this super duper high max SPL of 142 dB. It's going to be very difficult to overdrive the circuitry of this microphone. And the final pro is also most likely the biggest selling point of this microphone. When you are using the USB output, you're getting analog to digital analog to digital conversion up to 32 bit floating point and that's going to be something that blows a lot of people's minds but then we get to the cons and first one for me is i find this picks up a lot of the room so if you're in an untreated space or if you have a lot of reflective surfaces around the microphone that may become a problem Secondly, you don't have a headphone output, so when you're using that USB output, you are not getting the ability to have zero latency monitoring. Also, this is something that I complain about way too often, but I would love if they included a smaller firm mount in the box because that would make using this microphone in tight positions or tight spots like an... I, I know that sounds inappropriate, <laughs> but if you're using a microphone in an isolation cabinet and it has a massive shock mount, it's difficult to get a good position. So including a firm mount, even though the microphone does suffer from shocks if you move it around too much. So even though that's an issue and I understand that's why they probably did not include the firm mount, I would prefer if they did include it because using this microphone in those tight spots would be a lot easier for everyone. And finally, this is just an FYI. If you are planning on using that 32-bit floating point functionality, make sure that your DAW supports that because not all DAWs do. I use Logic Pro. I can't get that functionality with Logic Pro. I had to use and record in Reaper. So just make sure your DAW supports that or be ready to move over to a DAW that does support it. 
And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Rode NT1 5th Gen? On the electric guitar, I think it's pretty good. I think the bass and the low mids do get a touch overpowering, so you will likely need to EQ that a bit in post. Nothing in the upper mids pops out as terrible or offensive or scooped or just sharp. And then we get a lot of treble information on this thing, which allows us to get a very aggressive sound if we want it. So on electric guitar, I think it's pretty workable. Then on the acoustic guitar, again, I think it's pretty good. We do still have that issue with the bass and the low mids being a bit overpowering, and I think that's something you will need to EQ. And then we have something that is a little bit odd to my ears. Because of the treble boost, it sounds very bright but it doesn't sound lively or exciting or realistic. It doesn't have that same shimmer that I love on my acoustic instruments. And I think that's because it doesn't have a high shelf. It has more of a peak boost in the treble. So it's certainly not my favorite sound for that instrument, but it does work. Next up for singing, I think it works quite well for this application. I will sound like a broken record, but you will have to EQ the bass and the low mids. The upper mids, I found nothing offensive to it. And then because of that treble boost, we get this really nice detail. Maybe it is a touch artificial, but for the price, I think it sounds quite good. And finally for spoken word, because we don't have much of a roll off in the bass and low mids, you can get quite a thick bottom on this thing, especially if you eat the microphone. Yes, this is that radio broadcast sound, and now I hate myself. <laughs> then in the upper mids and general mids, we do have more of a neutral frequency response, but it does come across a bit more mid forward. And that is just in comparison to other microphones because the NT1 doesn't have a broad boost for the presence, treble and air to offset the mids. So the mids are more balanced in comparison to the other frequencies, which makes them come across a bit more forward compared to other microphones. And then in the upper frequencies, I would say you get quite a detailed sound, particularly in the treble region because you do have that 4 or 5 dB boost and it may also pick up a bit more of the mouth noises because of that. To wrap up the video, would I recommend the Rode NT1 5th Gen? Yes, I would. Of course, that depends on if you like the sound of the microphone and talking about the sound, I do think it offers a slightly different tone compared to the Rode NT1 4th Gen. It is pretty darn close though. Also, I found the sound of the 5th gen fairly enjoyable on every single sound source I tried it on. Is it without flaws? No. Is it the greatest sounding microphone on all those sound sources? No. But I found it fairly enjoyable, pretty easy to listen to, and pretty easy to work with. Also, we get the additional technical proficiency of this microphone where we have that incredibly low self noise of 4 dBA. So the self noise of the electronics shouldn't ever become an issue for you. And you have that max SPL of 142 dB. So I don't imagine many people will be able to overdrive the circuitry of this microphone or distort the capsule. And then we have the USB output of this thing. 32-bit floating point analog to digital conversion. It is undoubtedly impressive that you are able to salvage a recording where you have hit and even exceeded 0 dBFS. That wasn't possible until very recently. This microphone has that and a handful of recorders and maybe an interface or two have that. And it is very impressive. When you are able to salvage that, your mind will be blown. But I don't think this is a feature that is going to be useful for every single person in every single situation. So just because it has that functionality, I don't think you need to run out and buy it. If you're a voice actor and you go from whispering to screaming and you don't have your interface or your computer in your booth with you, this may be useful. 
If you're a gamer and you scream a lot, this may be useful, but keep in mind, you will need your software to capture your screen and your game, and then you will need to have a DAW open that supports 32-bit floating point recording to capture your microphone in order to get that benefit. Also, maybe if you have a stereo set of these and you're capturing extremely loud sound sources for sound effects, perhaps 32-bit floating point would be useful, but I imagine those who are doing that know how to set their gain appropriately. Pretty much for everybody else, it's pretty easy to set your gain properly, so I don't think you need 32-bit floating point. Is it cool? Absolutely. Is it new, state-of-the-art technology? Absolutely. Is it going to be useful for some people? Absolutely. But is it going to be useful for everybody? Absolutely not. So don't run out and buy it just because it's the new shiny thing. It's very cool though. It's undeniably very cool. All right, now that I have talked a few people off of the ledge from spending money they did not need to spend, that is it. I have nothing else. Let me know in the comments down below, what did you think of this microphone? Which mic was your favorite? What are your thoughts on 32-bit floating point conversion? Useful or gimmick? What applications do you think it would be useful for. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down, want a video, there's one beneath me. YouTube thinks it's perfect for you, you should click it. Click it. Those people are amazing, and that is all that I have for you. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for listening, I will talk to you next week, Bye bye Whoa. Whoa. This is too long. Boop.